You gonna have another Moon Man, or what are you gonna do? I want to go with this one. This is the one I think you were talking about. Oh yeah, that one's a little, uh, little more heavy, dude. Six seven, we're yep. getting up there. Yeah, the, if, those those mess me up, man. Like, yeah, I can't have more than one or two of those. Okay. I'm just like, I'm. It's just that brand. Like, I could handle some heavier beers, but that one in particular. Um, you're talking about like as per alcohol, alcohol content or I, I don't know. It just, it's it just like, you'll see it's, it's just a heavy duty. We will. Yeah. Anti-hero. This is from revolution brewing anti-hero Indian pale ale brewed in Chicago. Yep. Chicago. I'm going to try this one. Uh, hot Ooh. peak IPA from Breckenridge. Where's that at? Where is it from? Yeah. Breckenridge, Colorado. Oh, okay. From Littleton, Colorado. Sweet. A lot of my family grew up in Colorado Springs. Oh, yeah. This one's six and a half. So you're at what? (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Pretty pretty equal. (laughs) Uh, So. This one's pretty good. Oh, yeah? I need to get a napkin. Hold on. Uh, blue shop tiles. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. You know what? I I, I don't know why I buy them. <clears throat> Sorry, I I don't know why I buy them because they don't hold up for nothing. They're good for like wiping your hands off. Yeah. Like water, absorb some yeah. water off the ground. Yeah. But if you wipe this thing, it's like it just disintegrates. Yeah. Well, so I'm building this motor i felt i feel like these don't lint that much okay um so that's why i used it to like to to clean you know break clean and and just clean parts really quick um these things lint like crazy dude Mm -hmm. like shop rags so i don't want a bunch of lint in my motor right yep um i'm gonna tell you what you get what to get right now yeah what's that they're called wipe all textured cloths come in a box there's two sections in the box and you can't even tear these things okay no lint dude i and that's how i clean all of my engine parts all of them i gotta write that down wipe all wipe all i, I think it's like w y p a l look it up like that it comes in a box they're white they have like a texture on them and they're and they're lint they're 100 percent lint free and you okay. can use them for a while Nice. But I I only use them on motor stuff. Okay, I got these because I was in a pinch, dude. Like yep. I needed them today, and I went to oh, yeah for sure, AutoZone or whatever. They soaked um, up my beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what do you do for like rags, like shitty rags that you need around the around the shop? Um, so I'm very uh, I'm very lucky because I work for a dealer. Oh yeah, so yeah, you guys. So I just. Right. I just jack about twelve bun- or five or six bundles yeah. of the red rags. Yeah. Um, I have some right here. I can show you. Yeah. Yeah. So I I had red. Yeah. So I had red, and then um, I went to white, and now I went with green because I don't know. I like green. So. Okay. But yeah, they're the. Uh, you know they're yeah. the fourteen by they're they're standard tiles. Um, right. I get them off eBay. I think I get a thousand of them for twenty bucks. That's really that's like, good. So that's twenty cents each, dude. And you just throw them out when you're done. You know, and I okay, gotta so throw them away. Right. I I gotta buy a thousand a year. You know. Okay. Or, or I buy once a year and I'm good. You know? Yeah. So that's dude. Hit up hit up the white ball white. Yeah. They're white and they're textured. I gotta try those. Thanks, man. They're they are definitely game changers. Yeah, I, I just use the red ones for everything else, and I just bring them back to work because we have a guy who comes and picks everything up and washes it and dumps off yeah. all, all new stuff. So, yeah, I'm not throwing mine in the washing machine or anything. Right? Dude. <laughs> no, and you got to go to like a, a, a laundromat, so, like a soap and go. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> cool, man. So, that beer that you're drinking right now, yeah. What do you what do you rate it out of ten? It's pretty good. Uh, 
six, seven, maybe. Okay. And maybe. Moon Man is a what? Ah, uh, for me, for me, it's like an yeah. eight. That's what it's all about, man. It's for eight you. or nine, just because okay. I, I just like it. It's 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 good. It's good. It's good. You but know? now I know what, what what kind of I have a taste um, of what kind of beer you like. So then when um you know whenever I can send you some beer from my my side of the yeah state, uh, country. So. That'll be awesome. And you know what? Like whatever I send you and you send, I, we don't know what's distributed exactly. here or there. So, no. Ooh, this hey. one's interesting. Have you had this one? Yes. Okay. It's very malty. Like it's very like full flavored IPA. Yeah. It's, it's not like riny and quick. It That's lingers. Yeah, it lingers. It's like a punch. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Matt, why don't you fire us off here, man? Episode 14, let's hit it. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Broken Moto Show, episode 14. This is a show where myself, Matt, from howtomotorcyclerepair.com, and Cody from Motorcycle MD, we answer tech questions that you submit, and we just try to answer them. So, Cody, how do they uh, get in touch with us? Best way to get a hold of us is by emailing us at Ask Broken Moto. See, that's what messes me up. It's when I go for like, email us at, then you're like, The Broken Moto Show, but it should be at AskBrokenMotoShow at gmail.com. I think it's like a mind screw when I say those words back to back. <laughs> AskBrokenMoto at gmail.com. That's how you get a hold of us. Send us your uh, pictures, video, email. I mean, I already said that. Any information you have on the bike that is helpful for diagnosing. Okay, this could be the uh, mileage, uh, the year, make, and model. Obviously, I think Matt, uh, it helps us categorize when we put the year, make, and model in the, in the subject. Yeah, I think that helps, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It kind of helps isolate and know what we've seen, what we haven't seen. Just more rules, you know, just more rules. Yeah. Keep, keep stacking them. <laughs> um, but all the information that you guys have is great. You guys have been doing a great job um, with being very descriptive. Um, if you have a carburetor issue, um, throttle position helps us out. Pictures, just simple pictures of your spark plugs. If you have, if you have a carburetor or a, run, a runnability issue, send us a dang picture of the spark plugs. It helps out. It's a window into the motor and it's a door to our minds. It's that, one of those things that you should that just get one. on the wall of your house. <laughs> uh, cool. Freaking... <laughs> Freaking poet over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's rock it, dude. Question number one. All right. Hey, guys. James. All right. So this guy, is, I think he's talking about another channel. James. I don't mind calling this guy out because I don't know who he is. James Condon does generator repair videos, although he openly states he's not a trained mechanic. Super nice guy and does really great work for buying used broken generators, fixing them, and doing videos explaining their repairs. Sounds familiar. Uh, he's the musty one of generator repairs. Um, he was rebuilding an engine and was putting Permatex engine assembly lube on all the pieces as he was going. I'm not a trained mechanic either, nor have I ever done it for a living, but I've been around cars and other engines most of my life. I've never heard of any of, I've never heard of any, blah, 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 same, same thing twice. I've never heard of engine assembly loop. I watched my father, who was a trained mechanic, re rebuild multiple engines over the course of his life, and he just used motor oil as he went. I know Matt's working on a Chevelle project, so I just wanted to see if engine assembly lube was actually solving a real problem or if it was just Permatex trying to generate an additional revenue stream by using marketing wang to sell something that solved a problem that doesn't really exist. Remember Pet Rocks? Manscaping is more recent example. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear so many of those ads. That's funny. What kind of manscaping products are we talking about here? <laughs> uh, the lawnmowers and shit. <laughs> yeah. There's a company. There's a company. It's like the lawnmower 3000. It's, it's actually pretty <laughs> funny. It's, it's good marketing. It's good marketing. Uh, it's funny. Um, but keep up the great work, Jeff from Louisiana. Jeff, thanks for the laugh. Um, so, Matt, <laughs> um, I've rebuilt lots and lots of motors in my life. 
when it comes to motorcycles and ATVs and lawnmowers. Um, I know that you've rebuilt some motors in your life as well. What do you think? Well, I'm not a trained mechanic either, but I got some of the wank. There's the wank. Permatex. You can't, it's not coming up ultra no, slick. All right. So I have this stuff, obviously yeah. half a bottle. I've had it for years. I've been through many O bottles of that. And then I just have motor oil mm -hmm. in one of these cans as well. Cool. So, um, yeah, I think engine assembly lube is awesome mm -hmm. for certain things like non bearings that don't have balls in them. Like yeah. cams, uh, cam bridges, mm -hmm. uh, the Chevelle motor right there, all the bearing shells. I put this stuff in there. This stuff is like snail snap, man. Oh man. Yeah. It is sticky icky. You can like, it's like stringy. <laughs> um, it's good stuff. But here's the, here's what I like about it. Like you don't know when that engine is going to be run next. Yeah. You're assembling it today, but it could be a year, man, the way yeah. things go, this stuff, I guarantee you, it'll still be there. Yeah. A year from now, motor oil can run out, you know, drain might, down. Yeah. So I like the ascent uh, engine assembly loop for sure. Yeah. Ascent engine assembly loop is vital. Yeah. I, I will say that. You can use car engine oil, sure. Sure. I mean, anything is better than nothing. Right. Okay. But engine assembly lube is vital, especially on either a fresh rebuilt motor on first startup. If you know anything about motors, you know that the biggest time that's getting worn in on is on startups, on cold startups, um, on fresh rebuilds, that first initial and those next couple initial startups. I mean, all startups, all startups. That's the, that, that, that's the hardest part of the motor because there's not oil where it belongs. It's there, but it's not there um, as in while the motor's running and pressure is being applied. So, um, if, I mean, if you watch the factory workers working inside of these, you know, big time motor companies, Audi, Honda, um, if you can get videos of other companies, the, like the big four with motorcycles, where they're building these motors at, they're using assembly lube on everything. Yeah. And most likely those companies are selling their own, own assembly lube. What I use to keep this short and sweet, Matt, I've used that stuff. It's great. And that 350 that's on my bench right there, I haven't ran that motor ever. And I have lots of big end, high end stuff in that motor. And I've done lots of engine work to it. And I assembled everything with that stuff because it's great. And it sticks it's there. Um, it's not going to all drain out. It does. Some of it does drain out, but not all of it. I mean, it really, really just locks on there. It's awesome stuff. Right. I just got some new stuff from Maxima. Um, I like uh, assembly lubes with high um, zinc content. Yeah. High zinc is good. It embeds yeah. itself in, into that metal. Um, acts like a kind of like a coating for a bit. Um, I use molybdenum disulfide with oil mix. So I, I have an oil can like what Matt's got, and I take um, a tube of – it's very expensive stuff, it's, um, but it's called M Molly, Molly 68, or right. m m molybdenum disulfide. And I mix it with oil, and I keep like – I'll put it in like, um, like a little Tupperware dish, and I use a paintbrush. And I'll mix the oil and the molly together, makes like a gray paste. I just lay that on top of lobes, on top of, you know, whatever. Um, the Molly stuff works really great, too, for high pressure, high temperature areas. Yeah. And that stuff locks on, too. Um, but, yeah, engine, engine assembly lube is great. Matt, what you're using is great. Um, engine oil is great, too, but there's better stuff out there than what there used to be. Sure. And, you know, I would love to try other stuff, but, mm -hmm. man, this little bottle has lasted me through – I don't know how many engines. Yeah, man. Half a dozen, a dozen, and yep. it's halfway gone. So like, and it's like Good what, stuff. 10 bucks or yep. whatever. I mean, it's cheap. So. Good stuff. Yeah, I just ran out of my last, I had two bottles of it. And I've done a, I've done a couple motors and I just got this brand new stuff. I mean, I, I, I'm excited to use like new stuff. So yeah, I know it's going to be fine. It feels just like the Permatex. It's from Maxima. It says like two times the zinc. And I'm like, sweet. Yeah. So 
Um, but it feels exactly the same. It's red. It looks it looks identical. It smells identical. It tastes identical. So, yeah, cool. Uh, good, good question. That's a good question because it is important. Beer fun. All right. So For those of you who don't know, you guys know who Justo is yet? <laughs> you guys know who Justo is? We know who Justo is. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So. Justo came in with a few more beers. Thanks, Brett, brother. Dave C, Christoph, and Paul A. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, guys. It matters. For those that don't know, we just have a beer fund. It just simply supports the show. That's it. Yeah. So we, we, we put some time into this, into this questions, the videos, the editing. Um, and you guys may see a couple of new uh, – actually, this is what I wanted to say. So we got the new graphic. I kind of slipped it into tonight's yeah, video. Yeah, I saw that. A, a little soft launch. Nice. Right? Yeah. So when I'm proclaiming or oh, – I have a tendency of using the wrong words the wrong time. But <laughs> um, when I'm – Advocating. Advocating. Maybe. I don't know. Asking. Just asking. Yeah, there you go. Asking our viewers. If any of you guys are in with graphic design or animation or – um, you use things like maybe Final Cut or Motion or maybe Adobe, Photoshop, so on and so forth. Or and Animate, make, right? Yeah, and you can make still images move and develop something. We would love to come up with some kind of, I think it would be cool to have a, like a really short, maybe five to ten second, actually no, five to eight second bumper. Nice. And we have this awesome yeah. logo from Daryl. You guys know who Daryl is, did my shirts. Great guy. Again, comes out with some more fire. And gives us this awesome logo. We we can put it up here for the Broken Motor Show. And I would love to animate this in whatever means net possible. You know, yeah. so if any of you guys are creative out there and want to take a stab at it, um, this is just a volunteer work type thing. Um, we 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 love to to see what you guys can do with it, and maybe even use it as our bumper for the rest. Yeah, of Yeah, that, that'd ever. be awesome. You know, and that'd be really cool, like a viewer submitted bumper. Because I I have no way. I have no idea how to do that. Me neither. And I, I just, and I, yeah. I have ideas, but I, I just can't make it do it. You know? Sure. So sure. Cool. Anyways, beer fun guys. Thank you. For yeah, all thanks your so much. All right. Question number two. <clears throat> this is from, oh man, I'm getting messed up here. Uh, Ace. He's got a 78 Honda CB 400, a Hawk Honda Matic. Almost 28,000 miles. Thanks for the opportunity to ask a question. I've been a subscriber to you, to you both on your channels for three months. Since I picked up the 78 Honda Matic, two-cylinder, two-speed, semi-automatic, no clutch, no tachometer. It has been sitting for years in a carport. It is essentially stock with no modifications of significance. I am 65-plus year old. I am a 65-plus year old power plant engineer and need something to work on located somewhere in central Indiana. So he's kind of near me, about Ooh. 630 feet above sea level. Awesome info there. Yeah. Uh, the question is, I have bought acceleration at about half throttle. It accelerates fine till then. Any further, it bogs down. But if I back off to half throttle again, then increase slowly, it'll speed up to a point, then bog again until I slightly back off. Increase slowly, you'll speed up smoothly, then bog again. You guessed it. Back off, slowly increase the again. Eventually get into 60 miles an hour. If I gun it at any point, it bogs. When I got it, the gas tank was surprisingly clean, but rinsed it anyway. I squirted some oil in the cylinders, turned it over with the kicker, and let it sit for a few days, then sprayed some ether in the intake, kicked it, and vroom. Check compression and found 75 pounds left, 95 on the right, Make sure we'll come back to that in a second. I adjusted oh, yeah. the valves and jerked off the carbs. Uh, the bowls were the dirtiest I've ever seen, even on YouTube, and cleaned them with carb spray, compressed air, ultrasonic bath, carb spray again. Uh, you get the idea over and yeah. over. I gently rotted out the orifices and jets, set the float levels, and surprisingly had to solder up a crack in the bowl overflow tube. I reused most of the cleaned internal parts, jets, emulsion tube, except float needle and gasket. These were new parts. 
These two carbs look to be same as style as Cody's 900F carbs with the aluminum slide piston in the top. The piston slides easily with no sticking on the bench. I think I clean each carb thoroughly. However, something is not right. I did other maintenance and preparation, air filter, oil, electrical checks, tires, chain. I put the carbs back on after bench sink, but it ran partially on one cylinder at idle. If I pulled the wire off the left plug, it ran with no change. Pull the wire off the right, the engine died. I thought it was spark related because the wires were nicked, cracked with chip plug boots. I installed a new Chinese coil with the integral plug wires. No change. Ignition did not seem to be the problem. I yanked the carbs off again and recleaned the pilot circuit on the left carb. I reinstalled the carbs and both cylinders ran at idle and revved up smoothly. Both pipes warmed up. I synced the carbs with my homemade manometer and ran it around the block. It ran really well, slow speed, less than 30 miles an hour. Some cam chain rattle, so I reset the adjuster. I rechecked compression and found 100 pounds on each cylinder. Not good. I am hopeful for more improvement when I treat each cylinder with some injector cleaner, maybe a stuck ring or two. This leads us to my stated question. What are your thoughts about the hesitation and erratic acceleration? Thanks, Ace. All right, I got to catch my breath here really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, you. I can't um, read that long. Yeah, no, it's long. You, you, you did great. Uh, I don't I, even think it's worth talking about carburation. I know you know a lot about this model. Yeah, I mean, with the carbs and everything. So, yeah, I, but I, go ahead. What you were saying about, I have twin carb teardowns on this model. It covers all the 400s, the 450s. They all have the same aluminum top carbs. Okay. I, 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 I have a full carb overhaul on that if, if he needs it or anyone needs it. But I don't even think it's worth talking about carbs because okay. when you go from 75, PSI compression and 95 and the other one. I'm telling you, I've rebuilt probably three of these motors and all of them had a locked up ring on the right cylinder. Okay. All of them. And the left cylinder was like wiped. Like, you know, when the piston and the skirt start to become one unit? You ever seen that? I have no idea what you're talking there about. There you go. On the, on the left cylinder, that's what happens. And I don't know. It's like a it's like a failed point when these bikes sit up on a side stand and all the gas drains to the left hand side and it fills. I, I, I'm not sure what happens, but I've seen the exact same thing on three different bikes in different scenarios and different locations where they came from. But the left cylinder was like that. Right cylinder had locked rings, and what this guy's going through it sounds like he's got low compression. He's trying to solve an issue that is avoiding the real issue, which is he likely has either a white cylinder and piston or a white cylinder and a piston. He needs to either do a link down test. Matt, you got some videos on yep, that? I do. Link down the cylinders. Um, running at 100 PSI, man, it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. So this thing should have what? 150, 170? Easily. easily. Okay. Now, did you, those motors before you rebuilt them, did you take compression tests? Nope. Most of the time they're, they had piston slap. Okay. All right. I just, I just want to mention one thing. Like sometimes if you go to places like Harbor Freight, you're going to get what I think is a faulty design and a compression gauge tester. So see this hose here, which you plug into the cylinder head where the plug goes and this is to the gauge see that guy right there it's like mm -hmm. a tire valve the schrader valve yep the harbor freight gauge does not have that so you're adding cylinder volume and oh. you're gonna get half the reading roughly and you're gonna think you're gonna need a rebuilt motor no shit yeah dude i i and it dude the hose is like six feet long <laughs> it's it's so long and that's I, very interesting. So I, the straighter valves in the gauge. It yeah, it's somewhere. It's not in the. It's not here, where it should so, be. Right. So you plug it into the hose. The gauge holds the compression. Yeah. Okay. So wow, you know the 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 compression ratio formula. It's 
head volume over cylinder volume or whatever yeah. it is. Imagine if you increase your cylinder volume. Right, that small amount. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I, I bought that gauge and I was reading like 60 PSI in an engine. I'm like, what the hell? And then I went and bought this one and it was fine. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just, it I'm may not be the that. case here, but just make sure you're, where, you're using a proper gauge. That's so interesting because I've heard in many cases of people like, I got a water compression gauge. It's got like 50 PSI in the cylinder. It's got like 75, 90 PSI. I'm like, dude, that's no good. And you ran it home? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah. And then, and then like, um, I think I took readings off a of perfectly good running engine. And it was like under 100. I'm bad. like, dude, there's no way. Brutal. Brutal. So like, it, it gives you, it just, just think of the consequences. Like, shit, I got to take this whole motor apart. Right. You just start tearing it apart because of a stupid gauge. Right. Or you call in and talk to us and we're like, dude, yeah, that motor's junk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I just, Interesting. It, I think they might have fixed it because this okay. is years ago. Yeah. And then there's different model numbers. I don't know. And who knows? There's other companies that are selling the same type of thing. Yeah. But just, just be careful what you buy. It's very you know? good information. So yeah. um, anyway. I'm trying to get stuff from like when I, when all else fails, which you guys got to realize that a lot of stuff transfers over into the automotive world when it comes to most diagnostic tools. So if you're familiar with the automotive places like Summit Racing, those yeah. places that sell, you know, high end stuff for the most part, they're not like Amazon where you can get this end or that end. Yeah. Um, they have great stuff too. Like they have a, they have a great, a, a customer, uh, I mean, a, a member was asking um, for a good leak down tester. And I was like, oh, there's this one that I've heard or I've read the reviews on. I haven't used it personally, but it's coming from over off of summitracing.com. Yeah. And it looks, it looks high quality. The price is in the right price range. Boom. There it is. So a good leak down tester is very important. So with a yeah. good compression tester, the ones that you're getting from like, Amazon, they're like twenty two ninety nine, and it's like Tecton, Tecton yeah. Racing. And it's like, yeah. dude, yeah. Um, I built my own, and it 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 works. Okay. Um, and you got a video on that? Yeah, I do. Sweet. Um, but so like, and here here's the thing, guys. Like, if I do a compression test, like, well, not on the KX two fifty because that's not a four stroke, but right. let's like on that engine on the Chevelle. I, I couldn't even do a compression test on it. So I went straight to leak down because I didn't have a starter to roll it over. Yeah. Um, the leakage was like 70%. It was massive. Ooh. Um, but anyway, let's say you do a compression test and it's low, go to the next diagnostic tool to confirm your results from the first Bingo. test. Bingo. So you don't Good like, advice. Yeah. So let's say I had, let's say this engine here uh, for Ace. Okay. So he has 75 on the left. Uh, yeah. The whatever. Right. 75. So, okay. Then I hook up a leak down tester and it's 50% leak leakage, which is huge. And then I right. take, I take like the oil dipstick tube out and I air is pissing out. Okay. Well rings, Bingo. it's a stuck ring. Like you said. So, or if it's coming out the exhaust, it's an exhaust valve. If it's coming out the carburetor, it's an intake valve. Sure. If it's coming out the tap, it covers. It could be either or. Um, no, that that that's. I think that information is so basic, Matt, but like so crucial, because if you have low compression, now you need to figure out why it has low compression. Yeah, where where is it's the not air? like whoa, no, it's got to be something else. Where's the air going? Right, you because know? you having the most amount of knowledge to going into a motor rebuild is just as important as you getting there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you get a bad compression reading. Okay. So now what am I looking for? So it's been like, Oh God, I hit a motor apart and, blah, 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 and you cookie monster the motor apart. And you're like, well, I didn't find anything wrong. Let's put it back together again or whatever. Um, the leak down tester will point you in the right direction. You can say, okay, it's like what we just described. Yeah. Good information. A plus, A plus. So, okay. What if it's not, okay. So what if it's not, 
What if this thing has good compression? Well, then we're going to talk for the next hour about other things that could possibly be. <laughs> okay. Well, you have videos on these carbs, right? I do. So if he has a carburetor issue, come see me, man. Yeah. Um, I'll put a link in, in the description for the carbs, but you need to focus on the meat and potatoes. Sure. Which is figuring out if the motor's worth doing a carb clean on right now. Yeah, I just wanted to give this guy a little more info. Oh, yeah, I am using the Harbor Freight gauge. Yes, it has no Schrader valve. Right. Oh, I go by the good gauge. Oh, I got 140 PSI. Now what? It, now it'll what? give this guy a little more info. Well, it's carb related. It's definitely yeah. going to be carb related. I, I, I mean, there's no change with the coils. He swapped over to some Chinese coils. I would, I would put the Honda ones right back on there if there's no change. Yeah. Um, there's nothing to do with, with your transmission. I don't think it has anything to do with that. There is on that carburetor a fast idle throttle linkage. So when you give it, when you shift it into gear, Matt, it bumps the RPM up, but not enough to allow the motorcycle to roll. So it kind of kicks the RPMs up. And once you give it throttle, it functions this lever on the carbs and it functions both carbs. It's, it's kind of like one's operating before the other. It's kind of interesting. It's yeah, very, I've, I've never worked on one of those automatics. It's pretty interesting unit, but I think he has... I mean, what do you say? It's, I mean, he said that it did sit for, for, has been sitting for years in a carport, essentially stock. So yeah, again, it's, I'm really leaning in towards carb related. Um, until we know more. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I don't All want right. to send us that new student down a rabbit hole. Yeah. Ace, let us know, man. Yeah. Give us some us feedback. Email Thanks back. for the question. Question three. Hi, Matt and Cody. My name is Donnie, and I'm reaching out to you from Strathroe, Ontario, north of the border in Canada. I don't know. That's how you say it. Is that how you say it? How would you say it, Matt? What's that? Strathroy? Strathroy? Strathroy, Strathroy, Ontario, north of the border. We're probably not even close. (laughs) No. (laughs) (laughs) I recently purchased a 1986 VT 1100 Shadow Honda Shadow that, according to the previous owner, has been sitting for six years. The chrome is starting to rust. The aluminum needs polishing, and and all walk around indications tell me that it has been outside for those six years. It has 96,800 kilometers on it, which is in parentheses. 60,500 nailed it. We don't need anybody else, and it runs like a top. This is awesome. It's a lot of miles on that, on that twin. Uh, the inside of the tank, uh, the inside of the top tank is spotless. Then this one has two tanks. Um, sorry, I thought my wife's calling me. Um, all of the electrical stuff works like it should, except for the turn signals. They're broken off and dangling off by the wires, but they work. It's a complete bike. Everything is there. I rode it home. It got it. It's got lots of torque, and I'm used to a 300 horsepower turboed Hayabusa as a daily ride. This thing pulls very strong. Shout out to Honda for matching up to a 300 horsepower turboed <laughs> Hayabusa from 1986. <laughs> now the shaft drives for it. All right. Um. However, the brake lever for the front brakes feels like it's been welded in place. I'd be lucky if it moves one thirty second of an inch. It feels like it's bottoming out on something. It's pr- I'm pretty sure that it's got s- stuck piston or two in the front calipers, maybe even a master cylinder that needs a rebuild. It rolls down the road just fine, so I have no reason to think that the front brakes are dragging. Any tips or tricks or even special tools that I might need to complete the job would be greatly appreciated and definitely worth a contribution to your beer fund. Future future investor. <laughs> <laughs> Better answer this one. Good. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So the answer is he needs to rebuild his front brake master cylinder. 100%. How about the caliper? Absolutely. Yeah. All of it. And, and if that has the hydraulic uh, clutch, which I think it does. Probably. You need to rebuild yep. that one too. And you need to rebuild the slave cylinder. Yeah. Because they're probably all the same age. Yep. When you crack that front brake open or when you crack that clutch or when you crack those calipers open, you're going to find just the nastiest looking muddy muck yeah. inside of there. And it has to be spotless. 
Yeah, you got a video on uh, I have some a, of that stuff. I, I have a couple of videos. Yeah, I have a couple of videos inside the membership. We actually just went through a like a rebuild for our, for our old one and how I painted it up and that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of cool, intricate videos inside the membership on stuff like that. The main things that he's working on is making sure that when the piston – I actually just did a really, really cool video on this inside the membership. I like did a whiteboard, and I explained how all the parts work in different yeah. colors. I was like pumped about it. Um, but when that piston goes inside the bore, so when you actuate your front brake lever, it has like a, a rod, Matt, you know, yep. on a little piston, which the piston push is down further into the master cylinder, which is holding your brake fluid. So you kind of function this brake, brake lever inside of, inside of the hole. So <laughs> that piston inside, um, is very close tolerance to the, the, the cylinder. So his is locked, Right. And what he needs to be mindful of is when he pulls it all out, if he can get it out, the condition of that metal. It's like uh, the piston to a bore. You know, if it's all corroded yeah. and there's pits and gaps and nasty, you know, it looks like it's been chewed on inside, done. Yeah, so the the master body is aluminum and then the piston is pop probably – is it pot metal? Yeah, I think okay. it's like it, it. It could be steel, but I in my brain it's like a gray. It's like a yeah. gray, pot metal. Okay, but moisture, yeah. brake fluid and moisture go hand in hand. That's why I mean it's the majority of west to why it turns. Um, it's it, uh, it absorbs moisture. That's its job. Yeah, hydroscopic, right? Hydroscopic, because hydrophobic. I think it's hydroscopic. Yeah, it, yeah. it absorbs moisture. Um, and then eventually it, it has so much moisture in it. It's just sitting against the metal and just yep. pitting, yeah, just corroding Corrodes it. to mess. Um, so yeah. the question is how, how is he riding this thing? Like a 300 <laughs> right, horsepower dude. Hayabusa. <laughs> Rear no drum front brake. brake. No fail. front brake. <laughs> drum brakes never fail. They don't have any fluid and you just get on and go, man. <laughs> oh man. Have you ever ridden a Hayabusa? I've run a stock one, not a 300 horsepower turbo one. I, I never got a chance to ride one, dude. Okay. Um, so here's the deal. I was a PDI inspector at a dealer in 99. And that's when Hayabusa's, I don't know when they came out, but they were pretty popular. What's a PDI? Pre-delivery inspector. Oh, okay. Got it. So I was 18, dude. The day I turned 18 and got my M license, I got hired and I rode brand new bikes every Since day. <laughs> I, I logged probably 40 to 50 miles awesome. a day on Ducati's, Aprilas, and then the four Jap bikes, dude. Just all day long. That is, that's a job? Yeah. Man, that's it, cool. It paid eight bucks an hour, man. Yeah. <laughs> But you need to ride motorcycles, dude. I mean, dude, it was awesome, man. I That's mean, cool. and like, it was like open roads, right? I, my goal was to break a hundred on anything that I could. Dude. I was just like, <laughs> here. <laughs> here you go, Mr. Customer. It is ready. Yeah, it's ready to go. <laughs> let me no just tight- problems. Let me just tighten up the chain. It got a little loose. <laughs> <laughs> dude, something about like, sport bikes with you know big cc sport bikes and when you hit it and it's like you feel like you're on a roller coaster yeah it's like everything in your guts just like go back to your butt <laughs> you're just like oh <laughs> but the thing is uh so we, they sold a lot of hayabusas but okay um, there was one mechanic there's like he basically walked up to me he's like kid I'm riding every goddamn Hayabusa, you know, and he just like, he wouldn't let me touch him, dude. It's just cause he wanted to ride him. You know, he, he, he was a big fan, but, um, man, that, that was a cool job, dude. I, I rode the Hayabusa and the Z, I think the matching one was a ZX 14. Yeah. That came right. later, I think. Right. It came later. Big yeah. old, big old donkey of a bike, but very fast. Yeah. Guy bought it brand new owner guy probably mid to late 50s bought it from a dealership they sold it to him which was the first problem and then 
he got out of the parking lot, got home into his driveway and dumped it. Right? Put it up. The ride home scared him. Let the bike sit for 12 years. Oh, jeez. <laughs> came back into this, came into Honda. This was probably six years ago. And it was like, I have a ZX-14 with a hike. 12 miles on it, but it's been sitting for like 12, 15 years or whatever. He bought it. We sold him like a, like a, the Honda has a CTX lineup. I don't know if you know what that is. No. It's, eh, no one really wants to, to be honest with you. Okay. But, um, it's like a weird cruiser that, that, that they've been coming out with. They're comfortable bikes. No bashing to anyone riding CTXs out there. Um, came back and we, we sold them a 500cc CTX or something like that. And I had to restore this to the X. It needed injectors, it needed pump, it needed, dude, everything was just roached. 12 miles, full tank of gas, but it all, most of it evaporated. Tank was done. Yeah. Injectors were done. Pump was, I mean, he probably spent, I think it was like three grand in parts to get this thing. No, it was less than that. Three grand total, maybe about sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars in parts to get this thing just back to running. It was just a sad story. Wow. But that's my relationship with uh, Kawasaki, and then to Hayabusa, which has nothing to do with each other. So, <laughs> full circle. I mean, that, that's how our stories go. Full circle. Yeah. Yeah, but man, they put turbos on these things, dude. That's just insane. <sighs> I'd like to ride one. He went from that to a 86, 1100. Whatever. Yeah, whatever works, man. Whatever, dude. I mean, the, dude, the, the shaft drive shadows, the shaft drive V twins are sweet. If you can keep them running. Yeah. Cool, man. Question right. four. Question four. Uh, is this one mine? Yeah. Or, okay. Hey guys, just wanted to start by saying I absolutely love the show. I recently got into riding about a year ago when I purchased my first bike, which is a 98 Kawasaki Vulcan 800 model number uh, VN800B with 12,000 miles that had set for a few years in a garage. <clears throat> I had a local shop tune it up and ran great until I got a new work travel schedule so I'm not home very much and don't get to ride it often. Early in the summer, after getting back from approximately three months work rotation, I set out and put out 100 miles on my bike. And at the end, about 100 miles, I got a full tank of gas. And directly afterwards, the bike started sputtering and dying if I let off the throttle. I stopped at a nearby market and noticed gas pouring out one of those tubes on the bottom. In the gas was lots of oil. I turned the petcock valve thinking it would stop the leak. However, it did not. And it, that full tank of oily gas split, spit, spilt all over the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I let it sit thinking I must have flooded it. I come back about 15 minutes later and I try to fire it up. No luck. The starter is just spinning. I call my neighbor who's a big time shade tree mechanic and he comes with his truck and trailer to get me in the bike. He tries to turn it over. When he gets to me, but instead of the starter turning, it just makes a single loud thud clink. Tries a couple more times. Thinks it's a weak battery. Hooks up a jumper box. Tries several more times. More thud clinks. We trailer it home, and it stayed for another three months work rotation. During this rotation, I let, read a lot about the vacuum petcock causing gas to overfill the carb, pouring directly. Getting comfortable over there, dude. Dude, I'm so comfortable right now. <laughs> I just discovered I can part my feet up. Yeah. So I keep going. I'm listening. I'm listening. I, I just see you in the corner of my eye, like <laughs> about, about to take a nap. Um, <laughs> filling my crankcase as well, hydro locking the motor. I'm assuming that's what the thud clanks were. I'm coming back in a week for two months. I want to see about getting my bike back to running order. From everything I explained to you, how bad is the likely damage to my motor and where do I start, find out, start fixing? Thanks a million, Nick. All right, so I'm familiar with this problem. Um, I actually have a carb clean uh, video on this model. And what happens is the stuck, ugh, the, the stuck, the float gets stuck open. Yeah. Uh, there's nowhere for the fuel to go, but inside the engine. Yeah. It eventually fills up the crankcase, 
with a lot of gas. And that's the oil gas mixture you saw coming out. It, it actually comes out of the breathers. It's oh, just yeah. spewing out Everything. like, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's your, your pet cock could be bad, but it doesn't matter. I mean, your next line of defense is the carb float and that's what's Bingo. stuck open. Um, and it's just because varnish builds up on it or it gets worn, probably the varnish. So that valve is open and fuel is just pissing into the engine. Um, so what you need to do is obviously drain the oil, mm -hmm. change the oil, pull the carb, fully rebuild the carb, clean it, and then you'll be back uh, good as new. Yeah, it tends to take the spark plugs out, make sure your yeah. friend's looking right down the spark plug hole, and then turn it through. <laughs> I mean, <psh. laughs> Yeah. Yeah. With safety glasses, of course. So that thud clank you heard is there was probably a lot of fuel in the, in the cylinders and you're trying to turn it over and it's just like, you know, fluids do not compress. So. Yeah. So the one thing I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about yeah. with that is I'm not sure how the starter works. If that has like, uh, like starter reduction gears and it goes into like a Bendix or if like the starter has like a gear that's, that kind of shoots out and then attaches or attached to the gear. I mean, dude, you know what a Valkyrie is? Uh, yeah. Honda Valkyrie. I've seen those Hydrolock from, um, uh, cause cylinder, cylinder two has a vacuum line to the petcock. Okay. And the petcock sticks open because of varnish. Yeah. Cylinder two is the only one that fills up. Um, or it just fills up with two and then it starts to bleed into the crankcase after that. Sure. Um, and guys start turning it through, boom, snap the gear right off the start of reduction gear, which requires the motor to be pulled. Ooh. Brutal. That's a, that's a six. Very cylinder. rare case. That's a six cylinder, right? Six cylinder motor, oh, flat man. six. So, I mean, it just had to be so perfect that the cylinder was down enough with enough air pocket for it to compress have enough force to compress, hit a wall, boom, and then snap the weakest link, which would be the starter reduction gear. So not the gear on the starter, but the, the gear that that attaches to. Right. So what he could do is, you know, on the older bikes, you turn them through, you hear, conk, 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 and all of a sudden it'll start to turn it through or whatever. And those things are pretty hardy. But on yours, turn, take the starter off, right? Depending, maybe look at a parts fish. I didn't look at one for you. Sorry, guy. What's his name? Nick. Nick. I, I didn't look at the parts fish, but um, sometimes they like go in reverse of the motor and you got to pull off like three different covers to get to it. Just pay attention to how it all, all functions. If you can pull the starter off and look at the gear that it attaches to, you can get a socket on the motor by a 17, 19 millimeter wrench. Somewhere on, on the motor, you can turn it through with a socket and, a, and a, um, a driver. Turn it through and just make sure all the gears are still there. Keep turning it through. Because then if there is not, if there is a gear missing, well, now that gear is in your motor. Somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. So that's, that's important because the guy who came and picked up your bike shouldn't have been doing it like that. So bad dog, no biscuit to the guy who was kept turning it through, kept turning it through, kept turning it through, and trying to be like, well, why isn't it starting? Why isn't it starting? Why isn't it starting? Um, at some point, you guys say it's not going to start. Yeah, and, and gas was pissing everywhere. It should have been. Right. It's a mess. Just, it's just, a mess. Just, I know exactly just, how uh, you feel. And let's hope there's no damage from any of that. Yeah, for sure. And um, it's very well that, that there is none, you know, yeah. but I've seen it. I've seen it. No. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I don't know what it's, I didn't look. I don't know if it's a starter clutch setup or yeah. who knows. But, but Matt's right. I mean, take it all out, drain it all out. Yeah, pull the plugs, drain the oil, change the oil, and then you got you got that carb to deal with. And with this model, the float, the needle, and the needle seat, all those are is one part from Kawasaki. Mm. They don't sell them separate. It's a it's like a three part kit, and it's expensive. It's like fifty bucks or whatever. It's stupid. Well, it's but, better than Honda's thirty-eight dollar needle and a yeah. sixty dollar seat. 
dude, they are. There's so, someone's making money, <laughs> man. I'm like, I, you know, I'm an engineer and I work in manufacturing and I'm just like, man, this thing, I mean, yeah, it costs money, but I also know how I, I have to work with, with pricing. So I know what, how they price things. Right, usually right. it's just to give you guys an example, when you make something, you usually double it for retail mm -hmm. price parts quadruple. Yeah. So there you have it. Brutal. And that's the truth guys. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's just a boat that we're all riding, you yeah. know, <laughs> and you can do about it. You need it and you need it, you know? So, but, uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, what, what was I going to say? I was going to say about, um, shoot, it was really good too, man. What I had to say was so good, Matt. <laughs> you need to write this shit down, dude, as we're going through this, dude. Oh man. We were, we were talking about, you were saying, VT, and we talked about overflowing with gas. We talked about. The oh yes, I got remembered it, dude. It's awesome. I still got, got it. it. I still got it. So I want to explain to you guys how sensitive those float needles are. Okay, I've cleaned thousands of carburetors on dirt bikes, on multi carbs, on whatever you can think of when it comes to Honda motorcycles or anything else. I've I've cleaned a lot of carburetors, and I run into different situations all the time. A lot of them. I mean, because the main point. That reason why he might be upset and why he's emailing us is because earlier that summer, after getting back from an approximately three month work rotation, I set it out and put about 100 miles on it. And that was after he had gotten back from a local shop who had tuned it up and made it run great, he said. So it only sat for three months. Getting back from an approximate three month work rotation, three months. And all of a sudden, boom, the carbs and the float sticks and all of this. All, all hell breaks loose you know yeah all it takes matt is just a film from the gas tank for this yeah. to happen i mean i've cleaned and done very 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 good jobs replaced all the parts for good part you know honda stuff blah 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 blah, blah on carburetors they're tits and then um there's a little bit of old gas in the gas tank i drain that out but i don't like flush it per se yeah, I put fresh 93 octane or 92 octane, put some fuel stabilizer, ride some wheelies down the parking lot and send it on its way and tell the customer it's ready to go. He gets it, you know, he doesn't ride it for two weeks. He calls me up. Gas is pissing all over the place. The airbox is full of gas, blah, 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 blah. I just paid $500, blah, 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 blah. We'll bring it back and, I'll, and I'll, I'll look at it. And I take the bowl off and turn off the floats just like stuck. It's just like stuck down. I did a good job, yeah. but when it comes to like what was in the tank and that film, oh, just a slight film, guys, can feed down into there. Gas evaporates because it's open to atmospheric pressure. That's, that, that's the issue with gas and ethanol is that the bowl and the carb and all that stuff that we talk about, and the, you know, it's open to atmospheric pressure. It evaporates. In three months, it's definitely evaporated. Mm -hmm. And it could be just enough to go where the float's now like down – Gas dries and turns into a varnish, film, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And things stick. I mean, it's so, it, it's so sensitive. It's so sensitive. So I was working on an old Triumph, and we did a – it had a ammo carb on it that was smoked. The slide was so worn. Anyway, nice. I went with a – we put a Makuni carb on it. Cool. Um, brand new carb. Yeah. From Mikuni. This the float was stuck open. At some point, I, I, actually, I had it for like a week or two because I was tuning it. Ran good or, you know, never pissed any gas. The customer comes, picks it up, and I wheel it out, and the thing just starts pissing starts gas. Pissing like, gas. <laughs> oh, dude. Like right in front of them, I'm like, brand new carb. I'm like, dude, oh. Let me get my screwdriver out <laughs> and I'm tapping right. on it and it stops. And I'm like, I swear this was working earlier. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, all right. And he just gets on it and blasts it home. He's like, oh, it runs awesome. I'm like, right, what dude. the hell? I mean, it, it just had to happen right there. And then, you know, I'm like, what the hell? So 
Bro, um, if you knew the amount of times that I've had a bike just running perfectly or a four wheeler running perfectly, and I call the customer up, you know, a day later, or so come pick it up. They come pick it up and it won't start. They're there ready to pick up their bike. Yeah. And it won't start. And they yeah. just paid like, you know, $400, $500, yeah. $600. And I'm like choking it and doing this and doing that and kill <laughs> switching. And I'm like, dude, it happens. And so yeah. now what I do, Matt, I wait a week before I call them and I run that son of a bitch every day yeah start it up turn it off run it run it run it because you never know man these carbs are so sensitive and you just yeah. never know man <laughs> crazy crazier things have happened yeah that frustrating uh, hey man i've been there it's an embarrassing yeah. thing like yep. all right go back home i'll call you when it's ready yeah i'm <laughs> sorry like, yeah I'll, I'll take care i'll figure it out yeah but i mean you know in business as a service how you respond right and act on the situation is what makes you a good person. For right? sure. I mean, sure. you know, it's not like, oh, f it, it's fine. Take it. Yeah. You know? Take no, it. It'll be fine. Just ride it out. Yeah. Send yeah. It. No, it's, it's, <laughs> hey. Take care of it. Yeah. Take care of the problems and that's yep. it. So take care of the problem. Exactly. Day in the life. Yep. Dude. That's a wrap. That's it. Four questions. So, guys, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for spending your hour or so. <laughs> or <short>. more. <laughs> on, all, all, on all of these episodes that you guys have been watching, we know they're getting longer. We know they're getting, you know, maybe we're ranting more, but we appreciate you guys. Everyone who donated to the Beer Fund, we appreciate you. We really do. And, yeah, Matt, how do they get a hold of us? So, if you have tech questions, send them to askbrokenmoto@gmail.com. Year make and model, description, pics, videos, you know, the more the better. Matt, thank you for your time. Everybody, thank you for your time as well. And we'll see you guys All right. next time. Later, guys. Thank you. Later.